Right, hello and welcome back to the channel and let's uh, pick up where we left off last time in our adventures uh, in the Dungeons and Dragons looking for Shimmer Gloom. Right, we're in a bit of a pickle with, uh, with our wizard there. He's surrounded with monsters, but I think I have, a, I have an idea of what I'm about to do. I'm going to start this turn, this hero turn with Caleb our local paladin <laughs> and she will do what paladins do best okay she will let me grab her cards mm -hmm. <clears throat> first of all she will use the healing potion on um uh, emerald healing two hp right so emerald is fully healed now so that gets discarded drank that and did not leave a drop now <clears throat> we're going to divine challenge this fire newt that's over there on the other side of the of of the of the tile and we will place him adjacent to us Take, uh, place that monster adjacent to your hero it doesn't say on my tile so i'll put it here just in case if i miss then i will kill it with uh the freezing cloud next turn but First of all, I will use the plus eight divine challenge. Does she have any extra buffs? No, she does not. She has a dancing blade, which she will probably use, um, which she will probably use uh, if she misses. Let's have a look. That's a that's a six. Okay, six fourteen. His HP is uh, his AC is fourteen HP one, so he dies. Thanks a lot. That was very kind of you. To have participated in a little fight to kick things off in this hero turn. Right, treasure that he dropped is a scrimshot charm. Um, use after any die roll, re-roll re -roll the die. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant, that is. Okay, we will definitely uh, use it on her. Because um, why not? Or shall we give it to Emeril? You know what? I'll give it to Emeril, um, since we're adjacent, so I can do that. Uh, okay, let's put these away. So, now we can move. <clears throat> she can move six. I don't really want to go there, because I can fall into a trap, and that's, that's not ideal. What I want to do is go one, two, three, four. No, one, two, three, four, five, and six, right there. So she can explore in that direction. Slide it like so, so we can see where she's going. Um, yeah, there's nothing else I can do, is there? Are there? No, I don't really want to use that. It's, I hardly started this adventure and I'm going through dailies and um, utility powers too fast. Maybe I won't be able to recover them as I go. So there we go, dungeon tile. Ooh, Arcane Circle. Whew, that's that's the one from Castle Ravenloft, isn't it? Black Triangle at that. There's no traps. We have a monster. We have an encounter. All right. Um, yeah, monster, encounter, an Arcane Circle named Tile. Do, 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 do. Ho, ho, ho. Hopefully we have it somewhere handy. Arcane Circle. Put it down. Bear with me, guys. Sorry for the small, small delay. I was not prepared for that. I didn't know what was coming up. Okay, so let's have a look. What, what's it called? Arcane Circle. Right. Arcane Circle. There we go. Here we are. Okay, didn't take long. Sorry for slight delay. Arcane Circle, room event, let's draw one now, because this may affect either the encounter or the monster. Let's cut it in half, and it's, e it's an event. You discover a curious box lined with yellow and black stripes. The lid is embossed with a crossed-out ghost. The name P. Ven 
Bankman is carved into the side. Ooh. Ignore this card if this adventure uses dimensional shackles. It does not. Take the dimensional shackles token. During your hero phase, you may discard the token instead of attacking to defeat an in incorporeal non-villain undead creature on your on your tile. Hmm. I don't think I have the shackles here anywhere handy, so I'll just keep keep this card on Caleb. So we can defeat ghostly creature, basically incorporeal, corporeal, yeah, corporeal, corporeal. What's the proper pronunciation of that word? Anyways, non-villain undead creature. So any ghosts that will come up can be defeated. So that fits perfectly to our paladin, doesn't it? So let's put it on her. Great, great, fine. Okay, a monster. Oh, a zombie. <laughs> close, close. Okay, but right. So our zombie. We will use the original Castle Ravenloft because why not? We haven't painted. I really like that figure. Classic zombie. Uh, classic zombie miniature. Right there. Okay. An encounter card before we uh, before we activate the monster is friendly Chewinga. Oh, look at that. Really? It's an encounter? <laughs> I think it's one out of a hundred that gives you something beneficial. Look at that, your hero gains advantage. What? <laughs> Whoa, game, you're being too good to me, you know? But we need to remember that we're on the dire chamber with minus two AC. So the zombie will activate now and let's see what he does. Uh, if it's one within one tile, moves adjacent attacks with a rotting fist. Mm -hmm. Rotting fist plus five, three plus five is eight, 17 minus two, 15. So he does not hit one for each monster on the zombie style. So we need to be careful about him. Oh, he needs to move, move uh, adjacent. So he did. There you go. So nothing happened. Whew, that was close, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Right. Let's see. Uh, let's just double check that that everything is visible on the camera. Yep, right there. Okay, so that was Caleb. Caleb's activation is done. Mm -hmm. Sip of coffee. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, shall we get out of here with um, Emeril? He won't be able to reach the unexplored edge unless he goes towards the trap because uh, one two three four five six he will be able to land there so an encounter card is imminent can i deal to damage to destroy this bugbear uh, both bugbear and the earth cultist are in, uh, in emerald's control area so mm, that's not perfect i will be able to kill that Earth Cultist with my Freezing Cloud right there at the end of my hero phase. Uh, maybe I could... Maybe I could... Each monster on your tile. There, there isn't any monster on my tile. They're both in, in adjacent tiles. So I think the only, the only thing I can do right now is... Bugbear is 15. Where's the zombie? I can go... I will kill two. Hmm. You know what? Before we do that, before we activate Emerald, why don't we s check what um, Katibri can do? Katibri has a disadvantage on her, and we will choose whether we want to put our stance on the on the bow or uh, on the not the bow on the. Falling Hail Stance or Heart Seeker Stance. So one gives me plus four bonus to attack rolls and one gives me plus one damage. I will use this for plus four because I have a disadvantage, so that might come in handy. So I'll put my token on this on this card, giving me plus four bonus to attack. Hit or miss, you can move the monster you attack one tile in any direction. And that's exactly what I want to do. I will push him there. So I will roll two dice. Um, she will shoot that. Uh, she will shoot that. Uh, where's my? Sh where's my? Where's my bow? Uh, 
there it is, sorry, Tall Mario, okay, 16 and 13, look at that, okay, so we'll pick that one, his AC is uh, 16, right, let me get rid of that disadvantage, because uh, it caused me to pick the lower, lower dice roll, so plus, but plus 4, as a result of this uh, falling hail stance, so I have um, 17, which is higher than this uh, cultist's AC by one. So I deal last damage that he had, well, last wound that he had on him, destroying this um, cultist. Let's see what we get as a result of uh, as, as a result of him dropping the treasure card. This wand is powerful but unpredictable and dangerous. Wand of Wanda. Use instead of an attack action. Shuffle the spell deck and draw a card. Your hero casts that spell afterwards. Put a Wand of Wanda token on this card. Flip this card over after you use it. There are three. Oh, wow, that's something that uh, Emerald needs to have. Definitely. I'll put it on Katibri for now, because um, it's too far away. This card comes in here. So that was my... Um, mm, mm -hmm. So that was my... Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, uh, that was my, uh, sorry, uh, sorry for that, that was Katibri, now she can go move 6, uh, she can also uh, use her quick step ability, that says at the end of your exploration phase you can move up to 2 squares, so as a result of that she's really fast, so she can go 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, ah, maybe, yeah, okay, let's leave her there, let's put this uh, environment card over there so she will explore here hopefully connecting these two together so we can bypass the traps okay so she's exploring right now she's exploring right now and she finds oh a dead end <sighs> full of traps and enemy cards oh that's bad okay Mm -hmm. She found an outside tile with a jungle theme on it. Four traps and one treasure. Poof. Do we really want to risk that? So one, two, one, two, three, and four. I really need to um, grab some of the 3D printouts for the traps. Because they would look absolutely awesome. And I'll put a chest over there, like so. Boom. Okay, yeah, looks like it. So let's put it there. Um, what I was thinking about really is that I noticed that both these two uh, abilities, they are utility powers. So they should be used once uh, and flipped, but it doesn't say anything about, you know, needing them to be flipped. So for example, if you look at Cleric's utility power, it says flip this card over after use, yeah? But it doesn't say so here. It, it's kind of OP, really, if I can... I need to think about it. I need to think about it. Because she, she's, uh, she's quite powerful if I can use these um, on a regular basis. So what I'm going to do to make it fair, I will uh, probably give her two uses of each. So yeah, I'll put, a, I'll put a d6 on it, saying that I already used it once, and the other one will have two uses, to, and then I'll flip it. Uh -huh. So it's a, it's, a, it's a compromise, if you like. Right, Katibri is done. Now it's down to either Cleric or Wizard, right? <clears throat> cleric has a disadvantage. How about we uh, move him there? Next to his movement is five, isn't it? Or six, is it? Five. So he can go one, two, three, four, five. He will end up next to Caleb and Zombie. And then he can try and hit that zombie with... With what? Um, one other hero now. Mm -hmm. 
I can try and hit it with. Uh, I can try and hit it with my healing strike. Yeah, let's do it. One, two, three, four, five. Caleb has advantage. He has disadvantage, right? And he hits that zombie. Where's the zombie? Let's put it there. Zombie's AC is 11, so pretty weak. But we need to remember that we have disadvantage. So plus eight, I don't have anything. Well, I do. A dwarf and hammer. If adjacent, then plus one. If you choose not to move, now I moved, so this bonus does not apply. So oh, <laughs> it's a fail. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, disadvantage. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> So we failed, nothing happened, nothing happened. If you hit, I did not hit. So these do not apply. Um, is there anything else I can do? I don't think there is, to be honest with you, before we proceed with um, pulling an encounter card for not exploring. Um, yeah. Nothing I can I can do apart from drawing an encounter card. Let's have a look. Ambush. Brilliant. This is going to hurt. Thanks. <laughs> Choose the hero with the fewest hit points remaining. Um, Caleb has four remaining. Uh, Imeril six. Thorgrim six. Katibri uh, six. So it's Caleb. Caleb, uh, place a new monster on that hero style adjacent to that hero. Oh, come on. New monster. Or oh, do we want to cancel that before we see the monster? I can cancel it. It's just a monster, you know. I have quite a lot of it. Uh, 5, 10. I have 12 uh, XP in my, uh, in my XP pool. Do I want to cancel that? It's a good way of, uh, you know, finding extra items. Potentially, unless we we pull a, a difficult monster. Um, uh, nah, come on, let's do it. Let's have some fun. Doppelganger. Okay, doppelganger. And I think we have a nice miniature for a doppelganger. Bear, bear with me, guys. I'll find him somewhere on the other shelf. Do -do 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 -do. Doppelganger, where are you? Doppelganger. Well, same as last words. I find him quickly. <laughs> I'm sure I had it painted somewhere. Come on, where are you? No. Oh, come on. Shall we go for it? Yeah, why not? Look, this is one of my favorite miniatures from Folklore the Affliction, and this is a doppelganger. One of the nasty uh, enemies in in that game, so why don't we put it there? He's a big one, big lad. <laughs> He's not that big here, but uh, yeah, let's, let's have some fun with him. Why not? Okay, if the doppelganger is within one tile, the hero moves adjacent, closes hero and attacks that hero with a wicked slam. Okay, otherwise moves one. Infiltration. When the doppelganger is drawn, place your hero on the start tile and place the doppelganger in the square your hero previously occupied. Oh, okay. So Caleb is zapped to the start tile. That's interesting. <clears throat> He's too large to fit in there. But he's okay to be to be here. So <clears throat> let's activate him. Plus four to hit. 18. Okay. 18. Uh, his AC is 16. So he hits me for one. One damage on Thorgrim. Okay. And he stays in Thorgrim's uh, play area. Whew, that's what happens. Right. He's a big guy, isn't he? Eh? <clears throat> and we had minus two AC anyway for standing in the diet chamber. I almost forgot that, but the roll was high enough to hit me anyway. Right, so that was Thorgrim. Now it's down to uh, Emeril. Right, what can we do? We need to do something about this 
situation because if the zombie attacks and, and zombie is in Kayla's play area, if zombie attacks he will get a buff for being um for for extra enemies on the same tile. So he will attack for plus one, if I remember correctly, for each for each monster on the zombie style. Uh for each monster, yeah, so two damage. Oh, we don't want that. So what can we do? What can we uh, remove one token? Uh, place the freezing cloud mark on a cloud token freezing mark. At the end, remove one token mark and deal one damage. Discard the freezing cloud marker when there are no cloud tokens left on it. Okay, it doesn't say anything about uh, us being able to move that. We cannot move it, so it stays there. But what can we do? Shall I attack this bugbear or not? Or shall I go in there and hit them with? Uh, we have two enemies, so maybe we should keep it for Grim Sh uh, for um, uh, Shimmergloom. Yeah, yeah. Let's keep it for Shimmergloom. We can cancel the encounter card if we pull one, and I think we will. Uh, attack each monster on that tile. Choose a tile one tile away from you. Yeah, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to move there. I will stay on this tile and I will use Scorching Burst. Okay, choose a tile away, one tile away from you, which is this one, and attack each monster. Seven plus. All right, nothing else I can do to boost my damage with it. Um, no. So the white one is for zombie, red one is for doppelganger. Let's put their cards here. Doppelganger, where are you, mate? They're not too powerful. So white one for zombie, red one for doppelganger. Yeah, white one too. That was a two. <laughs> and that's a one. <laughs> Come on, Emerio. Are you are you are you serious right now, mate? <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks for nothing. So zombie goes in there. Doppelganger goes in here. Uh, that was a fail. Uh, nothing we could do about it right now. Now we need to draw an encounter card for not exploring. And it is a bloodlust curse. The furious need for destruction fills your mind. You are cursed. Place this on your hero card as a reminder. At the start of your hero phase, you take one damage. Discard this card when you defeat a monster. Oh, that's bad, isn't it? Eh? And now the bugbear, what is it that the bugbear can do? <clears throat> if the bugbear is within one tile, it's not. Otherwise, this monster moves two tiles towards the closest hero. So one, two. Okay, we will hurt it next time. Whew. There you go. So that completes uh, the entire hero phase. Um, in this episode, shall we go for another one? I think we shall, because I enjoy it so much. Um, what are what are the options right now? Our options right now. <laughs> Everything is done here. How about... Oh, he will move too, so I don't really want him to do that. I'm thinking about activating Caleb and progressing towards uh, this bugbear. She can move six, so one, two, uh, one, two three, four, five, six. She, uh, she would end up here. I can't reach. No, can't reach. So let's leave her for later. Shall we activate? Uh, how hard does he hit? He hit for two. He hits for two. So I will activate with Caleb, not Caleb, Emerald again. Okay, the, the Bloodlust Curse kicks in and uh, deals one damage. I need to kill at least one enemy to get rid of that. And I will use Scorching Burst again. Oh, I could have used Scrimshot Charm last turn. I forgot about that. Sorry for this. However, um, did I take... Did I take the... Oh, I did. Oh, I did. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. 
So, Scorching, uh, Scorching, where is it? Scorching Burst, again, uh, white for zombie, red for doppelganger. Okay, white for zombie, zombie, red for doppelganger, and I think I killed both now. Too many. So, 14 plus 7, 21, zombie is dead. Okay, zombie is dead and drops. Run! Play this blessing immediately until the end of your next hero phase. Each hero gains plus two speed. Okay, let's deal with that in just a moment. Let's clear this one off the board. Goes into my XP pile. Now 12 plus... Yeah, that's more than enough to kill the doppelganger. Let's put him on the side. Because he died. <laughs> Miserably. So I don't get any treasure for that, but I'll keep the, uh, the card. Okay. Let's clear that. Let's get rid of the curse as well, because I defe defeated a monster. All right. And I have plus two speed. <clears throat> and what does that mean for us? And that's actually perfect for Caleb right there. Okay, just move it slightly towards this direction. So let me put this run card here. So um, I'll put it there. There's another unexplored edge that I can use maybe for Caleb, we'll see. So, um, his speed would be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, exactly what I need. And then she can help me out, deal one damage to him. I'll have minus two AC being on this, on this style, or I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, and be with cutting, cutting three. Which way should we go? Um, she can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, I won't be able to, I won't be able to kill that bugbear. Th that bugbear will attack and hit somebody, unfortunately. I misplayed it. Oh, never mind. Eight. I go here. Okay. Before I explore, though, I, I will use, um one of the freezing clouds and deal one damage to this bugbear. Okay, he has one remaining, one HP remaining. Okay, and then we can explore. Is it visible on the camera? It is. A dungeon tile that's coming up. Oh, it's a white triangle with three enemies and an ambush site. Oops, come back. Three enemies. Oh, bloody hell. Whew. Three enemies. One. Two and three. So I drew them in this in this order. One, two, and three. First one, firebot. Firebot. Do we have a firebot painted? Um, well, not firebot, but a bot indeed. <laughs> Let's grab a nice uh, bot that will represent the firebot family. <laughs> and let's put it there. Oh, let me show you to the camera one of the Warhammer Quest Cursed City ones right there okay so the first one the second one is Urcultist I don't have these painted yet let's put him there and the third one spider castle raven loft original mini yeah painted so three more monsters will activate and gang up on um, poor Imero. But before that, we need to um, activate Bugbear. There's no encounter card, okay? White triangle, so Bugbear moves. Uh, he's not adjacent, uh, is within one tile, so he moves adjacent to Cleric and attacks the Cleric. With 7 plus 815, uh, Cleric's AC is 16 minus 2 for standing in the Dire Chamber, so he gets hit for 2. Ugh. That was a hard hit. So he has 5 wounds now on him, and we need to do something about this soon. Okay, so Bugbear um, has been activated. Firebat. Okay, let's see what the Firebat does. If it's within two tiles, well, it moves adjacent to the closest here and attacks with Fiery Bite. Okay, so it moves here and attacks for plus five. Let's have a look. 
1621. Yeah, one damage on Emerald, two wounds on him right now. Then the firebug goes into the um, control area. Urcultist. If it's within one tile of a hero attacks with a clo uh, the closest hero with a blinding crossbow bolt. Oh, plus four. Don't like that. Eight plus four is twelve. Uh, Emerald's AC is fourteen, so he misses, thankfully, because not only would he have done one damage, but he would have applied disadvantage. So nothing happened there. And the last one is a spider, which is quite nasty. If it's adjacent, it's not. If it's within one tile, it attacks with web. Plus 11. Oof. Oh! So one damage and slowed, if I remember correctly. Uh, plays the spider adjacent to that hero. So he just jumped right there and slowed. There you go. Oof. So he goes into uh, Emerald's play area. Right. There we are, that's what's going on right now. Shall we zoom in slightly like that? Yeah. Caleb is slightly off camera, but she will catch up uh, shortly. Okay, so that was Emerald. First activation. Now, um, Katibri. We have two enemies and a black bear. Black bear already activated, so yeah. Attack, use this during uh, this, oh, oh, attack each monster on your tile. Look at that. We, we, we're activating with Katibri. We're not using any of her stances, okay? But I'm going to start with Dragon's Breath Elixir, okay? This attack does not count as an attack action. Brilliant, plus four, one damage. Attack each monster. So I'll attack both the spider and the bat. Uh, discard after using, okay? So, uh, white one for the spider, red one for the bat. Let's have a look. Two and four. <laughs> bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> Total failure. So, we used that. Did not help us at all. Okay. So, <clears throat> what is it that we're going to do now? Um, are we going to use either the uh, adjacent? So, no. Uh, you cannot attack with this power if your hero is adjacent to a monster. She's not adjacent to any of the monsters. Which one is the weakest? Uh, Firebutt 14, Cultist 13 and Spider 15. But the spider da deals 2 damage if adjacent and the spider is adjacent. Huh. What else do we have? Attack one monster, choose a tile, attack each monster on that tile. No. Well, no, I don't want to use these uh, adjacent. No, I'll just use my Tormoril bow to attack. To attack. Oh, yeah, yeah, plus six. I will attack. Uh, who are we going to attack? The air cultist, maybe. Yeah, let's let's attack the air cultist. Okay, 12, 18, Urcultist, gone. Lovely. Let's see what the treasure is. Clarity, it's a fortune. In the heat of the battle, you remain calm and take command. Play immediately, choose one hero. That hero either regains one point of, or loses disadvantage. Of course, I'm going to use it on... <clears throat> on... Uh, choose one hero. That hero either regains one hit point. One hero, so any hero. <clears throat> I will choose Thorgrim because he had 5 HP, 5 wounds on him. So there you go. <clears throat> so, uh, where is the Urcultist card? It goes into my XP pool. Brilliant. And now we can move. We can move and I can go 8. Um, until the end of your next hero phase, go 8, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Or oh, did I did I already no I did not do it. Eight. So I can go here, let's say. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. She can explore in this direction. And let's again 
move it like so because why not and Caleb is off camera but you'll see her shortly another tile let's have a look we're getting closer oh king's crypt a named tile with a black triangle on it mm -hmm. two coffins everything yeah <laughs> Uh-huh, so let's put these, uh, where, where can I put them so you can see them? Can I zoom out slightly, readjust the camera, like so. Okay, so we need two coffins, uh, two coffins. I don't have any 3D printouts for the coffins yet. We'll need to work on that. King's Crypt. Bear with me while I while I search for King's Crypt. That is, didn't take long. Let's see what it is before we do anything. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Cut in the middle. Boom. Oh, a lot of text. Irina Koliana's Crypt. Oh, don't like the sound of that. A black cat is perched atop of the coffin, held in this room. It hisses as you approach. You are unnerved when the felon decides to follow you. Sorry. Ignore this card if, the, if this adventure uses the animal token. It does not. Take the animal token. The cut is familiar in the service of Strad. You take a minus one penalty to all attack rolls as long as the cut accompanies you. The cut leaves you to report back to Strad when you end your movement in Strad script. <laughs> Discard the animal token in Strad script. No. <laughs> so he, she has a minus one penalty to attack rolls. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Uh, a monster. Uh -huh. Let's reveal the monster. Oh my god. Geralion zombie. Whoa. That's a big guy like that. I don't have him painted. Do I have any other midis that could um, substitute Girana? That's a werewolf. We don't want a werewolf. We want a monkey, really. No, I don't have a don't have any yet. So we will place him there, big guy. Okay. Before we activate him, though, let's see what the encounter card is. We have quite a lot of ooh. What is this? Environment. Heavy traffic. It seems like some of these traps have already been set off by previous adversary adventurers. Mm -hmm. When triggering a trap token, roll a die. On a roll of 11 or higher, the trap token is discarded without triggering. Mm, yeah, why not? Let's keep it on this side. It, it's, not, it's not hurtful. It doesn't hurt to have it. Ooh, that's bad. So Geralion Zombie now. We need to activate you, mate. If the Geralion Zombie is within one tile, it is. Moves adjacent to the closest hero and punches that hero twice. Boom! Goes in there and will punch me twice. So, Rend. If both of the Geralion Zombie's punches hit the same hero, it also rends the hero. Oh my god, it'll do... For potentially six points of damage, knocking her out. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, one hit, nine plus five is 14. Her AC is 16. Ha! She's not in a, so she, she's hit once for two damage. Wow, this guy needs to die quickly. All right, so one missed, this one missed. That's 14, uh, that was 14. Her AC is 16 because she's level two now. But this one hit her for two. So if this one is here, then this one is there. Whoa. Well, for like XP though. Nasty bugger. Wow. Okay. <laughs> was not expecting that to happen. Are we going to search these coffins? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see about that. So we still have a cleric and uh caliph ready to go is there anything we can do to reach that geralion zombie and kill it let's have a look um can you see there she is one two three four five six seven eight no not enough not enough so maybe i'll risk it and go that direction no 
No, she also has the shackles uh, ability on her. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nope, there's nothing I can do. She has four wounds on her dancing blade on your tile. She's within one tile, so I can't reach. Uh, hit or miss on your tile. We use one monster activates during. Place your hero adjacent to that monster. Oh, see, I could have, I could have done that. Forgot about it. This um, bravery, because that would have allowed me to teleport. Ah, made a mistake. Okay, I missed it, so I won't, I won't uh, correct any of the, of the, of the rules right now. But I will have to keep that in mind in just a moment. Because, uh, tu, 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 yeah, there's nothing I can do right now. So she finish, finishes her uh, hero activation and we will draw an encounter card. Oh, another environment. Is this one better than heavy traffic? Where's all the good treasure? Did someone else get it, get to it first? When drawing a treasure card for defeating a monster, if it's an item, discard it and do... Oh, no, 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 no. No, we will stop this with... Um, with these five XP points, okay, we don't want to lose any any uh, items that might be very beneficial for us when we find Shimmer Gloom. So that was Caleb. Her activation is done, and the last one for for this playthrough for this uh, hero phase is our cleric, mm -hmm. Mr. Cleric. What can you do? Mm-hmm. Right. Use when your hero and your tiger is hit by an attack. Okay. If you hit in one condition on a hero on your tile, it's just uh, wow, well, you choose that hero regains one. I think I'll go in here and try to kill. Uh, try to kill one of the one of the enemies, either the bats or the or the spider. The spider is worse, so I would really like to. You did not attack, but I want to attack. That's that's that thing, you know. Um, yeah, so let's go. I have uh, eight, not eight, seven movement points. So one, two, three, four, five. Is it here um, within one tile of you? Okay. In that case, I'll go here. Yes, I can't go any further because he blocks the way. And I'll use my healing strike on this Geralion, whose AC is only 12. So he's reasonably easy to, uh, to be hit. And I have a Dwarven Hammer for plus one. Okay, so the dwarf and hammer should help me uh, if you choose not to move now. Oh no, come on. Four, five, it's 13. Whew, just one, one above Geralion's AC. So he's wounded. He's got three HP, uh, two HP remaining. Two HP remaining. Yeah, because his total, where is his card? Over there. So he has um, one damage on him. So we need to remember that he still has, I'll, I'll do it like this, otherwise I'll forget. So he has two to, to go, right? But, of course, I did not kill it. I did not kill it, but uh, if you hit, choose one hero within one tile of you, that hero regains one hit point. Now, uh, we can choose uh, either myself, I have 4 HP out of 8, Katibri, 4 HP out of 8, or Timero, 3 HP out of 8. So I think I will heal um, Timero for one, and that will complete my activation for the Cleric. I will discard the Blessing Run, because that's the end of uh, uh, Hero Phase. <clears throat> oh, hang on, what does it say? Discard this card at the end of your next Hero Phase. Next Hero Phase. 
So it still applies because I pulled it. And if I complete his next hero phase, then the blessing will disappear if I if I understand it correctly, if I played it correctly. So let's keep it in play. Anyways, that concludes um, today's episode. Whew. We're progressing nicely through the dungeon. We acquired quite a lot of wounds. Um, however, how many tiles do we have left? We have only four tiles. So this one definitely isn't the... Uh, the spot that we're looking for, I can't remember what it was called, uh, where, where the rocky lair in which Glimmer, Glimmer, uh, Shimmer Gloom sleeps. But one of these three definitely is. So we'll see about that in the next episode. So f hopefully we will uh, catch up with Shimmer Gloom and then I'll introduce his, uh, his card and his abilities to you. Um, we'll see about that when the time comes. All right, so... That's that. That's where we are right now. We have some options uh, to go through next time in the next episode. But until then, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little um, playthrough that we've uh, we've put together today. Let, please please let me know what you what you think about these in the comment section uh, below. Are these episodes too long? Uh, too short? Uh, are they boring? Are they exciting? Do you like them or not? Is there anything I can change? Speed things up or maybe just show you the highlights of the fights. Not all the, uh, not all the uh, phases uh, as they go. Yeah, just uh, I'm just curious what, what you think. And um, I'm, gra I will, I'll, I'm grateful in advance for any feedback. Right. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next episode shortly. Bye bye.